Next up, ladies and gentlemen, a real pioneer from a, a great town of huge surf energy. We even have the mayor here tonight, Mitch Kaufman. One of the, my most favorite people in the world, but he was predecessed by this great talent, Larry Minyard, born in Hazard, Kentucky. Yeah. Born and lived on a river. And the pattern in his life is water. Always having lots of water around him. And this guy turned out to be a natural born surfer. From the get go, standing on the pier, this is where he started. He's up casting off of the Jackson Beach Pier, looking out and there's these guys on surfboards. Who is it? Hall of Fame member Bruce Cleland out there tearing it up or trying to learn to tear it up because this was the very beginning of surfing in Jacksonville and he's up there catching fish going hmm looks like those guys are having some fun so he decided he'd take it up what did he do he got his first surfboard a 98 Phil Edwards model by Hobie doesn't he wish he still has that board today <laughs> He was, he still to this day honors Bruce Clallan as his biggest influence. And Bruce, what a style master he is. Bruce living over in Hawaii right now. He's living the life as well. But Larry Minyard became an instant success on the competition circuit. He was always a top 4A competitor throughout the 60s and early 70s. ESA men's champion, 1970. He said one of his favorite events was in 1970, won the ESA 4A men's division by winning two contests in one week at its Sebastian Inlet because he came down here and the local guys just didn't think that he had a chance. And he laughed because uh, he was surfing the North Jetties in Jacksonville, which is very similar to Sebastian Inlet. He went out there and spanked the local boys. And they woke up. Jacksonville, that's where there's some surf energy. After that, he went on to four world contest appearances representing the United States in San Diego in 66, Puerto Rico 68, Australia 1970, and San Diego in 72, where he made it to the semifinals, beating such luminaries as Gavin Rudolph and Ian Cairns. 1972 world team representing the good old East Coast. It was after that that he decided that he wanted to get into shape and he was helping design surfboards for Challenger while he was competing and they were listening to his input but he decided well let's try this shaping thing so he and Joe Roland, Dick Roseboro formed a brand RMR, Roland Minyard Roseboro Surfboards and that's what his first label was. It went on to produce the label Fluid Visions and in the winter he'd go down to Fox Surfboards and help Ted James out and, you know that's where Greg Lore would go as well go down and surf shape a whole lot of boards in Lake Worth where Pat's from what a great shaper one of his greatest memories that he kind of scratches his head about today is when he was on that world contest team in Australia he met a guy named Jerry Lopez Jerry invited him to come to Hawaii, stay at his house and surf with him. And he decided he'd been gone too long from home and he went back to Jacksonville. <laughs> what the hell were you thinking, Larry? Anyway. <laughs> In these days, Larry, after shaping, having a great career and shaped until about 1978, he decided fishing was what he really wanted to do. So he's gone full, full circle, fishing on Jack's Pier, went back up to Jack's Pier and caught a few more fish. He is a pro fisherman, redfish tournaments. He did that around the southeast and the Gulf Coast, and now he's a full-time fishing guide in Jacksonville and gets out surfing every now and again with his 14-year-old son. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Minyard.
better put that right there. I want to thank everyone. You know, I had finally pretty much given up on being up here. <laughs> I'm glad I could be here with you in person when this happens. I want to thank Mitch Kaufman has done so much for surfing in Northeast Florida to keep surfing alive, the memory of all the guys, the old guys. Mitch, great guy. You know, surfing, who would ever thought a kid from the mountains of Kentucky, and I, when I say mountains, I mean mountains, rough, would come at a young age to Florida, end up getting in a sport, um, we all know surfing, what a sport, and have the opportunity to travel all over the world, meet great people, great memories, and represent the United States four times in world competition, <clears throat> which really means a lot to me, you know. In the contest one night, well, they kind of, uh, I was going to tell some stories, but it kind of got already told. But I was on the beach in San Diego, and I was sitting beside the bleachers waiting for my heat to come up, which would have been the quarterfinals, with Gavin Rudolph and Ian Carnes and uh, a few other guys, I, I can't remember who. And any time there's a sport going on, you know there's some betting going on. Dick was there and a few other people. <laughs> Not doing the betting, but he was at the contest. And there was a group of older guys, I guess they were maybe um, publishers of magazines and people that were involved in the surfing, and they were betting on every heat, bunches of money. And I was sitting on the beach close enough that I could hear the conversations going on. So they get to the heat that I'm in with these guys, and they're going down, they're betting on each surfer, going down the way, and they get to Larry Minyard, and the guy goes, one of them says, oh, that kid's from the East Coast, man. He's, nah, don't, we're not betting on him. They put me at the bottom. Piss me off. <laughs> well, when the heat was over, I walked out of the water, and at that time, I realized that I'd beaten Ian Carnes and Gavin Rudolph champions from, from their countries. And I will never forget when I was walking by these gentlemen, there were six or eight of them, and I was taking my jersey off, and they were looking at me like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> right then I realized that East Coast surfers can do anything they want to do. All they need is the equipment, the right frame of mind, the waves. We had the talent. You see what's gone on since that time of me being a pioneer world champions time and time again and just great competitors in, in competition around the world. And I'm very proud to accept this as a pioneer because we're all pioneers. Some of us in the past, some in the present, some in the future. God bless you. Thank you. How many of you knew that we had this representation that early from the East Coast? How many of you knew that? Applause? All right. Not many. You know, a lot of people thought it started with Tabling and Jeff Crawford and Greg Lore, but this guy, what a phenomenal surfer. <laughs>